Hello, this is the online New Vision TV. I am Lynn Komjisha. The Uganda Communications Commission has warned the public not to fall victims of those using social media platforms to sell examination papers. The perpetrators are said to be using WhatsApp to solicit for money from the public on promises that they will send them examination papers. UCC says that whoever is caught doing this will be prosecuted. Social media can be used for good reasons, but some people also misuse social media. The current trend during this examination period is to use social media platform WhatsApp to send pictures of Uganda National Examination Board examination question papers and leak them to members of the public under the guise that the leaked papers are the ones Uganda National Examination Board will be questioning candidates about. We have seen is through WhatsApp. Uh, I believe uh, they take a picture of the examination content and then quickly set it out to their network, which then is used to, you know, um, uh, uh, used for, for cheating during the examination time. The Uganda Communications Commission says they are working alongside other security agencies to nip the culprits in the bud. As much as they cannot give the particulars of the wrongdoers or note how many they are for security reasons. There is uh, very close monitoring and tracking of those, uh, of those persons. Culprits are therefore warned against this vice since the practice carries a two-year imprisonment for those convicted under Article 19 of the Uganda Examination Board Act. If these people are teachers, we will also invoke uh, the rules governing the teachers, the teachers' conditions of service. Uh, we shall work through the Ministry of Education and Sports and Education Service Commission to have these teachers' registration uh, withdrawn. The general public has been warned against participating, aiding and supporting those who are leaking papers and also to report to Uganda National Examination Board and Uganda Communication Commission in case you get leaked papers. I am Sarah Chisache reporting for New Vision Television. In other news, even before women started coming forward to accuse Donald Trump of sexual assault, the Republican candidate with a record of misogynistic talk was no hero with female voters. Now, the gender gap in U.S. presidential politics is said to be its widest yet as women swam in support of Hillary Clinton and her bid to become the first female U.S. president. Veronica Brown is a registered Republican in the state of Virginia. She has been a staunch Republican since before she was even old enough to vote. This year, however, she will cast her ballot for Hillary Clinton. I, as a woman, cannot support someone who says such terrible things about women, um, terrible things about minorities. I just can't align myself with a party that uh, aligns itself with people like Donald Trump. A 2005 video of Donald Trump apparently bragging about groping women has caused many Republicans to withdraw support and sparked strong criticism across party lines. Adding flames to the fire, almost a dozen women have since come forward accusing him of sexual assault, accusations which his campaign denies. These vicious claims about me of inappropriate conduct with women are totally and absolutely false. But data shows the gender gap was widening long before this month's revelations. Since the 1980s, women have consistently tended to vote Democrats more than Republicans. And polls in this election show Clinton leads Trump by 15 percent points among female voters on average. The first woman to receive the nomination of a major U.S. political party, Clinton has appealed to female voters since the beginning of her campaign. If fighting for women's health care and paid family leave and equal pay is playing the woman card, then deal me in! Experts say her identity as a woman, combined with Trump's perceived attitude toward women, has contributed to a wider spread in the polls. I suspect that where the increase in the size of the gender gap is coming from is independent women, some of whom might have in other elections voted for a Republican candidate who probably find themselves having a hard time 
uh, imagining them, themselves casting a ballot for Trump. In, In the, the third, third debate, debate the, the Republican, Republican candidate, candidate went, went so far, so far as, as to call, call his, his opponent, opponent a, nasty a nasty woman, woman. a statement which a statement became the butt which of countless the jokes and the, and the inspiration for a Clinton yet marketing yet campaign. Yet some women are steadfast in their support of Trump. Yet some women are steadfast in their support of Trump. Donald Trump is not a, an abuser of women. Donald Trump is a man who likes women. Donald Trump is a man who supports women. Donald Trump is a man who treats women fairly and with respect. He treats women very well, and the media lies and says he doesn't, but that's not true. Clinton and Trump are neck and neck as voters head to the polls. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to join us again for more of your daily updates on mobile and anywhere on the go. I am Lynn Komdisha.